Previously, we've seen that if a polynomial is solvable by radicals, then its Galois group must be solvable. Today, we're going to look at the converse, namely that if f has a solvable Galois group, then it must be solvable by radicals. In other words, its roots are expressible by radicals. They're contained in a radical extension of the base field f. So recall that f throughout will be a field of characteristic zero. Recall the definition of a radical extension. A finite extension of fields is radical if there are, exists a sequence of intermediate fields uh, for which each field is an extension of the previous one by an nth root for some n. Recall also that when we're talking about the Galois group of a polynomial, we mean the Galois group of the extension of f uh, by the splitting up to the splitting field. Uh, note also that we say that a, a Galois extension is cyclic if it has cyclic Galois group. This is a concept we'll need quite a bit. So let's first look at a simple lemma. <clears throat> Suppose we have a cyclic Galois extension of degree n and that f, the base field, contains all the nth roots of unity, then there exists an element beta in E such that E is generated over f by beta and beta to the n is in f. In other words, E is generated over f by an nth root. Let's look at the proof of this. So, uh, the Galois group is cyclic, so let's take a generator, say sigma, and let's take a primitive nth root of unity, zeta, in f. Then we know that the uh, elements of the Galois group are linearly independent as linear transformations of E. And, uh, so if we take the complete set of elements of the Galois group, E sigma up to sigma n minus 1, and we take the elements 1, zeta up to zeta to the n minus 1 in F, then the corresponding linear combination of, this, of the sigma to the i cannot be 0. In other words, there must exist an element alpha such that when we evaluate uh, E plus zeta sigma plus zeta to the n minus 1 sigma to the n minus 1 at alpha, the, the result is not zero. So pick such an alpha and let beta be this element. Apply sigma to beta. What do we get? We get sigma alpha plus zeta sigma squared alpha, etc. because zeta is in the base field F. And the final term is zeta to the n minus one sigma to the n alpha. Of course, sigma to the n is the identity. So this is just zeta to the n minus 1 times alpha, which of course is the same as zeta to the minus 1 alpha. So let's pull this element to the front of the sum and then just look, add the rest of it on. And we see that we get exactly zeta to the minus 1 of beta. So sigma beta is zeta to the minus 1 beta and sigma to the i beta is zeta to the minus i beta. So since zeta is a primitive nth root of unity, sigma to the i of beta is never equal to beta. What does this mean? This means that beta is not fixed by any element of the Galois group. So it can't be contained in any proper subfield of E because all the proper subfields are this fixed fields for certain subgroups of the Galois group. So what does that mean? That means that the smallest field containing f and beta has to be E. So E is the field generated by beta over f. Finally, sigma of beta to the n, beta to the n, is sigma beta to the n, and that's zeta to the minus 1 beta to the n. And since zeta is a primitive nth root of unity, that's just beta to the n.
So what's that proof? That shows that beta to the n is fixed by every element of the Galois group. And so beta to the n is in the fixed field, which of course is just f. So beta is an nth root of an element of f as was required. Now, let's prove the main theorem, which we'll state in the following way. Suppose we have a finite Galois extension with a solvable Galois group, then E is contained in a radical extension. So we're going to prove this by induction on the size of the Galois group. Let's first assume that N is prime. And let zeta be a primitive pth root of unity. And consider the following diagram of field extensions. So we extend both f and e by zeta. Notice that e zeta is a Galois extension of f because if e is the splitting field of a polynomial f of x, then e zeta is the splitting field of x to the p minus 1 times f of x. So we can consider the Galois group of e to the zeta over f, and we have the usual Galois theory. What we want to show, we want to show that e zeta is a radical extension of f. We already know, of course, obviously, that f of zeta is a radical extension of f. We just need to show that e zeta is a radical extension of f zeta. And we want to apply the lemma. So as long as we know that this is a, if the Galois group of E zeta over F zeta is cyclic of order P, then the lemma, the previous lemma will give us the required fact. So we just need to verify this fact. Let's remember that since E is normal, there's a surjective homomorphism from the Galois group of the big extension to the Galois group of E over F. And the kernel of this map, of course, is the set of automorphisms that can fix all the elements of E, so the Galois group E of zeta over E. Uh, I now want to restrict this and show that it induces an isomorphism from the subgroup E, uh, the, the subgroup corresponding, the subgroup that is the Galois group of E zeta over F of zeta to GEF. To do this, I need to check that this subgroup here intersects the kernel of the map trivially. So why is the Galois group of E zeta over F of zeta intersect the Galois group of E zeta over E equal to E? Well, if we had a sigma in this intersection, then by definition, it would fix F of zeta and it would fix E. So sigma restricted to E is the identity, sigma on zeta is the identity, so clearly sigma would be the identity on E zeta. In other words, an element that's in the intersection is just the identity. Because of this, the restriction map restricted to this subgroup is injective. Since it's an injective map, into a simple abelian group, cyclic abelian group, it must be an isomorphism. So the Galois group of this extension is CP, the cyclic group of order P. F, the base field F of zeta contains all P roots of unity. So we can apply the lemma to say that there exists an alpha in E zeta such that alpha to the p is an f of zeta, and e zeta is generated by alpha over f of zeta. So this tells us that e zeta is a radical extension of f of zeta. We know f of zeta is a radical extension of f, and that proves that e zeta is a radical extension of f. So that proves the base case when the Galois group is cyclic. Let's have a look at the induction step. So now consider the general case when 
the Galois group has order n and assume the result is true for extensions of smaller degree. Choose a maximal normal subgroup n of this Galois group. Since the Galois group is solvable, the quotient GEF over N will be a solvable simple group, and the only solvable simple groups are the cyclic groups of order P. Let's let F prime be the fixed field of, with respect to this maximal normal subgroup N. Then F prime is normal because N is normal, and the Galois group of F prime over F is isomorphic to this quotient, that's CP. So by the previous paragraph, we know that f prime of zeta is a radical extension of f. Now, the Galois group GE f prime is equal to n, which is solvable, because n is a subgroup of a solvable group. Since n is strictly smaller than the Galois group GEF, by the inductive hypothesis, we know that E is contained in some radical extension E prime of F prime. So there exists a chain of subfields of the usual form where each one as the extension of the previous one by an nth root. Let's set fi double prime equal to fi prime extended by zeta. Then the corresponding chain of fields extended by zeta is also a radical extension because fi double prime is equal to fi double prime i minus one beta i. Thus e prime zeta is a radical extension of f prime zeta. And by the previous paragraph, f prime zeta is a radical extension of f. So e prime zeta is a radical extension of f as required. So combining this result with the previous result, we have that if f is a field of characteristic zero, the, then the Galois group of a polynomial f of x is solvable if and only f of x is solvable by radicals.